Hey guys, today I'm going to answer the question why every time I talk about the MPL we see a picture of autumn. Autumn is the MPL. Autumn represents exactly what the MPL is. So I'm going to use facts and data. She started playing during Dragon Maze. So not that long ago, definitely not like beta or old school magic, but a lot of you guys started playing during Dragon Maze. And she entered some different events. And as we're going to see a little later, her big, big push was from the Mythic Invitation. Before winning the Mythic Invitational, which she won $50,000 and already makes more than Sam Black in one win, this is her list of results and winning. So she finished 11th in the Battle for Zendikar Pro Tour, uh, 278th, 348th, 355 137 and 157. So these results are not, they're not Owen Turtlewall, who is the person she replaced. Owen typically finishes in the top 100 even on his worst day, but he has a lot more top eights. So based on this, she gets a life changing invitation. And that's what the MPL is. It does change their lives. But at the cost of every other Magic Pros. I also went about to see what um, Autumn, what other, if was Autumn a great content creator? Not really. Like, see, her, she didn't have that much content before. But she was pushed onto the mainstream by that special invite for the Mythic Invitational in Cleveland, and then she won the Mythic Championship. And that's how she became a full-time MPL member. Now, does that mean everyone who wins a Mythic Championship becomes an MPL member when there is a slot available? No, absolutely not. Because the person who won the second MP Mythic Championship, number two, was not even invited back to defend his title. So forget about the NPL. He wasn't even invited back as a special invitation because there were too many other diversity people to kind of push. Autumn, for best, for good or worse, is mainstream magic now. When you think Magic the Gathering and you talk about to somebody who doesn't play magic, they're going to think, oh, Autumn, the non-binary magic champion. Because that has been what Forbes, Kotaku, Esport League, every single person has pushed this narrative that the best Magic, and this is true, the best Magic player right now, based on Mythic points, which is the only thing that matters, because the Pro Tour is not real anymore, the Mythic this, Mythic that, that's a totally different video, thinks of Autumn, the non-binary Magic player. And that's kind of the narrative. That is the narrative that Magic is pushing. As a marketing campaign, I understand where they're coming from. If you have 100% of the Magic players who are white and male, then there's no reason to advertise to them anymore. Go after a different market. Uh, in this case, uh, the different market is everyone who's not a white male. I think the Mythic Invitation can be used correctly to promote females in Magic, uh, trans individuals in Magic, um, LGBTQ community in Magic. And it, it, there's, an, there's a way to organically do that. Uh, my fear is that since we're not organically doing that right now, and any female who's interested in magic is going to look at autumn and say oh cool we we have a non-binary champion in magic maybe i will get into this game then they go to a local game store and it's all dudes that's a very different thing that's being promoted to you from reality right so if you don't play magic if you ask your friends or families like what magic player can they name um, only a few come in mind because of recent news owen turnwall accused of sexual harassment and other bad things, had to delete his 
Twitch stream that he was streaming 12 hours a day on Magic. And I did look at Autumn's streams, and she does stream, so good on her. So she is at least fulfilling her contract, but her streams barely get 100 people. Barely get 100 people on Twitch at, uh, right now it's 6 p.m. on a Thursday, which NYU, you're partying on Thursday at 6 p.m. So I assume that people who would be interested would tune in. But they're not. Her streams get less than 100 people. Uh, her overall channel has, I think, 100,000 as of the recording of this video. I have videos on Alex Pacini over 100,000 views. So I don't know how Twitch works, but if that's what they mean by views and you can only get 100 people watching you, that's not great. Um, that is not great. I think it's great. So, okay, let me make it. I'm trying to separate the person. Autumn, I think, is a good person. I think she is a good representation of the game. But as the main representation, as the face of magic, she absolutely deserves it. Again, if it's what you say in sports, if you don't want the U.S. to run 13-0 to against Thailand, then Thailand goalie stops a goal. It's, it's on you to stop the other team from running you off the court. Right? The same with high school football sometimes. Uh, in Texas, it's very big. Sometimes you see like 80, like 80 to like zero. And it's like, okay, well, it's time to go home now. But or, uh, even the League of Legends where you had teams go, Golden Guardians used to be really bad and they had all these memes and really, really offensive stuff. Autumn deserves to be the face of magic, whether I believe so or not. She has the most mythic points. She has the most. She is appears on Forbes. If you had a Forbes magazine, which is a big magazine, or CNN, had to do a report on Magic the Gathering, and they needed to find a player to do an interview, one hundred percent they will go to Autumn first before anyone else. Not only is he the best player in Magic right now according to Mythic Points, which I think is a good indicator. She's also very good for the narrative. And I just don't want... I Okay, I use the gender term she because I'm not sure what gender term Autumn is comfortable with. Um, and that's a little confusing to me. My point is, any MPL video has to have Autumn in it. Because she represents chains. And all these pros who have been very supportive of this quote chains. Like she took Owen Turnerwall's place. There could be no other old school. So it's old school versus new, new school. Autumn only started playing Magic during Dragon Maze. That's true. That's what she says into Forbes magazine. I have no reason to doubt that. She did not win any major Magic tournaments until she was invited to the Mythic Invitational. And the fact there's only like, I think 32 of them. How many were, were in the Mythic Invitation 1? Was it 68 still? Or I know the special invitations weren't as many because the pros were upset about the 16 additional special invitations. So I think there's maybe less people in the first one. But it's a lot different as she would probably... Autumn would probably agree with me on this from her Pro Tour record playing against at a Pro Tour with thousands of players. Her best finish was 11th. She has no top eights at any Pro Tour or any event where anyone can enter. So it's almost like, let's say that there's 10,000 Magic players who would enter, or let's, maybe not 10,000, 5,000 Magic players who enter a Pro Tour but what if we could cut to the top 64 and you didn't have to play in Magic? You just kind of got in. That's what the Mythic Invitational is. It's a direct cut to the top 64. And then, of course, randomly, if we entered 64 times and we just played randomly, we might win at least one time. So the story around Autumn, I think it's fantastic. I think it is great. But it's not typical. Owen's story is far more typical of a Magic player than Autumn's story. Owen is old school. 
Do I like Owen a lot? I've never actually talked that bad about him until recent Kotaku articles came out. And I don't have any dirt on Owen. Not saying that I have... I mean, I do have it on other pros, just not Owen. And I totally took me out. It was out of the blue when I learned that he what he was accused of. He's old school. He's dedicated his entire life to Magic the Gathering since he was probably five. Seth Manfield is old school. Reed Duke is old school. Senhar Senhar... He at least he played during what was it? Uh, what was the Pro Tour he won? Averson restored. Did he win a miracles or was that Alexander Haynes? I think that was Alexander Haynes. He's old school. So you have a lot of very ingrained, and that's what the Pro Tour did at the time because they you could roll over points. You could, there were different levels, platinum, and they would give you different amounts of money for. Uh, so you were encouraged to continue. If you were on the gravy train it was very hard for you not to be on a gravy train. So every year you could do better and better. And I like the fact that they allow people like Autumn and Autumn can win because she's new. Everyone's set to zero. The reason she's the number one best magic player now is because there is no gravy train. Had there been a gravy train, I would argue that she would never have been able to get on the gravy train because it was so cemented with the Efros and the Sam Blacks and... Where's Sam Black now? He's a, he's gone because he's not part of MPL. There's so many pros that you haven't heard anything about and no one cares about them anymore because they're not being promoted like they once were by Wizards of the Coast. There's no Sam Black pictures anymore. Like He was one of the best innovators of Magic the Gathering. Deck techs. I remember some of his crazy decks that he would make. So we are in a situation where, and this is a stream that I had today, and it was a very, this is as popular as I've seen the stream, and there was only 100 people watching, I think 105, and then went down to like 103 after like a second. And I was one of the 105, by the way. And I was watching her play Magic against Brad Nelson. And Brad Nelson, obviously, is another famous Magic player, so you expect it to be over 100, right? And it just dawned upon me, uh, it really dawned upon me that Magic needs, like, the MPL just needs to go away. There's no saving it. There's no... You either have to do one of two things. You either have to get rid of it or you have to get rid of the people in it who are ingrained on this gravy train. And that would be, they're slowly doing that. Remember, we lost Owen, we lost Yuya Watanabe, and then we lost Gary T. However, it's not enough. If you're going to say, this is our narrative, we believe in our marketing team, we've done market research, we need more women we have one Jessica right now. We have one non-binary. We possibly need some trans individuals in this 32. Go for it. 100% go for it. But don't make a hybrid. This hybrid is not going to work because the pros are going to say, Saviz, and they're going to attack Saviz and his wife. I personally think his wife is pretty awesome. She's a you know, attack dog. I, I like that. That's kind of interesting. Kind of like uh, the Mary, the Mary character with Owen was involved with, and also that one dude from Star City Games, Todd Steve. Was it Todd Stevens or was it some other dude? No, AJ. Okay. Like all kind of just blends in my head. There's so many of them. Okay, Todd Stevens. There's another Todd, isn't there? Okay, Todd. Was Todd Stevens the one who got was touching people inappropriately at bars and stuff and getting them drunk? Was that someone else? I think that was Todd Stevens. Now, the other one I was talking about was AJ. And she was able to... AJ was a very popular and still a very popular streamer. And Mary got AJ. Um, and then Mary got Owen, looks like. Autumn, for all you... Seems like a nice individual. I think we go with more Autumns and we kick out all the pros. That's the only solution to this. And we bring more Savizes, more Jessicas. 
we say, forget the ELO. The problem right now is we're kind of stuck in this middle thing where the pros are going to say, ELO this, ELO that. Forbes doesn't care about you guys, Huey Jensen. Forbes does not care about you, Reed Duke. Forbes cares about Autumn. And if Autumn can go on a, do, do a Forbes interview, I think Huey Jensen, actually, no, I, I take it back. The, actually, the only other profile Forbes has done is Huey Jensen. I think it's because he recently came out as a gay or a few years ago, and then they have his profile too. Forbes, CNN, other companies, news outlets, CNBC, they want, they absolutely need to push this narrative of autumn. But they don't want to look at 30 other, 30 other white males, right? They want, uh, you either go full diversity or you go full merit. You cannot go in between, which is what it's doing right now. Bye, guys.